Welcome. This is the one-year Bible reading for June 20th. We are going to be finishing the book of First Kings today, reading the last chapter, chapter 22, starting in verse 1. For three years there was no war between Aram and Israel. Then during the third year, King Jehoshaphat of Judah went to visit King Ahab of Israel. During the visit, Ahab said to his officials, Do you realize that the Arameans are still occupying our city of Ramoth, Gilead, and we haven't done a thing about it? Then he turned to Jehoshaphat and asked, Will you join me in fighting against Ramoth, Gilead? And Jehoshaphat replied to King Ahab, Why, of course, you and I are brothers, and my troops are yours to command. Even my horses are at your service. Then Jehoshaphat added, But first, let's find out what the Lord says. So King Ahab summoned his prophets, about 400 of them, and asked them, Should I go to war against Ramoth Gilead or not? They all replied, Go right ahead. The Lord will give you a glorious victory. But Jehoshaphat asked, Isn't there a prophet of the Lord around too? I would like to ask him the same question. King Ahab replied, There is still one prophet of the Lord, but I hate him. He never prophesies anything but bad news for him, for me. His name is Micaiah, son of Imla. You shouldn't talk like that, Jehoshaphat said. Let's hear what he has to say. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Quick, go and get Micaiah, son of Imla. King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in their royal robes, were sitting on thrones on the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. All of Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah, son of Kenayana, made some iron horns and proclaimed, This is what the Lord says. With these horns, you will gore the Arameans to death. All the other prophets agreed. They said, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will give you victory. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. But Micaiah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what the Lord tells me to say. When Micaiah arrived before the king, Ahab asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or not? And Micaiah replied, Go right ahead. The Lord will give the king a glorious victory. Sarcastically, he says this. But the king replied sharply, How many times must I demand that you speak only the truth when you speak for the Lord? So Micaiah told him, In a vision, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountain like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, Their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. Didn't I tell you? The king said to Jehoshaphat, He does it every time. He never prophesies anything but bad news for me. Then Micaiah continued, listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heavens around him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramoth Gilead so that he can be killed there? There were many suggestions until finally a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. How will you do this? The Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouths of your prophets, for the Lord has determined disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Kenaiah, walked up to Micaiah and slapped him across the face. When did the spirit of the Lord leave me to speak to you, he demanded. And Micaiah replied, you will find out soon enough when you find yourself hiding in some secret room. King Ahab of Israel then ordered, arrest Micaiah and take him back to Ammon, Ammon, the governor of the city, and to my son, Joash. Give them this order from the king. Put this man in prison and feed him nothing but bread and water until I return safely from battle. But Micaiah replied, If you return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added to those standing around, take note of what I have said. So the king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah led their armies against 
Now King Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, As we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me. But you wear your royal robes. So Ahab disguised himself and they went into battle. Now the king of Aram had issued these orders to his 32 charioteers, attack only the king of Israel. So when the Aramean charioteers saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robes, they went after him. There is the king of Israel, they shouted. But when Jehoshaphat cried out, the charioteers realized that he was not the king of Israel, and they stopped chasing him. An Aramean soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops, and the arrow hit the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Get me out of here, Ahab groaned to the driver of his chariot. I have been badly wounded. The battle raged all that day, and Ahab was propped up in his chariot, facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran down to the floor of his chariot, and as evening arrived, he died. Just as the sun was setting, the cry ran through his troops, It's all over. Return home. So the king died, and his body was taken to Samaria and buried there. Then his chariot was washed beside the pool of Samaria, where the prostitutes bathed, and dogs came and licked the king's blood, just as the Lord had promised. The rest of the events of Ahab's reign and the story of the ivory palace and the cities he built are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Ahab died, he was buried among his ancestors. Then his son, uh, Ahaziah, became the next king. Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, began to rule over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab's reign. He was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother was Azuba, the daughter of uh, Shili. Jehoshaphat was a good king, following the example of his father, Asa. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. During his reign, however, he failed to remove all the pagan shrines, and the people still offered sacrifices and burned incense there. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. The rest of the events in Jehoshaphat's reign, the extent of his power, and the wars he waged are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. He banished from the land the rest of the shrine prostitutes who still continued their practices from the days of his father, Asa. There was no king in Edom at that time, only a deputy. Jehoshaphat also built a fleet of trading ships to sail to Ophir for gold. But the ships never set sail, for they were wrecked at Ezion Geber. At that time, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, proposed to, Je to Jehoshaphat, let my men sail an expedition with your men. But Jehoshaphat refused the offer. When Jehoshaphat died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Jehoram became the next king. Ahaziah, son of Ahab, began to rule in the 17th year of King Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria two years, but he did evil in the Lord's sight, following the example of his father and mother and the example of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who led Israel into the sin of idolatry. He served Baal and worshipped him, arousing the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, just as his father had done. New Testament today, we're starting in Acts 13, verse 16. And here we have Paul and their assistant, John Mark, at the synagogue in Antioch, speaking to the Jewish. Uh, so Paul stood and lifted his hand to quiet them, those in the synagogue, and started speaking. People of Israel, he said, and you devout Gentiles who fear the God of Israel, listen to me. The God of this nation of Israel chose our ancestors and made them prosper in Egypt. Then he powerfully led them out of their slavery. He put up with them through 40 years of wandering around in the wilderness. Then he destroyed seven and gave their land to Israel as an inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After that, judges ruled until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people begged for a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin, who reigned for 40 years. But God removed him from the kingship and replaced him with David, a man about whom God said, 
David, son of Jesse, is a man after my own heart, for he will do everything I want him to do. And it is one of King David's descendants, Jesus, who is God's promised Savior of Israel. But before he came, John the Baptist preached the need for everyone in Israel to turn from sin and turn to God and be baptized. As John was finishing his ministry, he asked, Do you think I am the Messiah? No, but he is coming soon, and I am not even worthy to be his slave. Brothers, you sons of Abraham, and all you devout Gentiles who fear the God of Israel, this salvation is for us. The people in Jerusalem and their leaders fulfilled prophecy by condemning Jesus to death. They didn't recognize him or realize that he is the one the prophets had written about, though they hear the prophet's words read every Sabbath. They found no cause to ju just cause to execute him, but they asked Pilate to have him killed anyway. When they had fulfilled all the prophecies concerning his death, they took him down from the cross and placed him in a tomb. But God, God raised him from the dead, and he appeared over a period of many days to those who had gone with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are his witnesses to the people of Israel. And now Barnabas and I are here to bring you this good news. God's promise to our ancestors has come true in our own time, in that God raised Jesus. This is what the second psalm is talking about when it says concerning Jesus, You are my son. Today I have become your father. For God had promised to raise him from the dead, never again to die. This is stated in the scripture that says, I will give you the sacred blessings that I promised to David. Another psalm explains it more fully, saying, You will not allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. That's from Psalm 16. Now, this is not a reference to David, for after David had served his generation according to the will of God, he died and was buried, and his body decayed. No, it was a reference to someone else, someone whom God raised and whose body did not decay. Brothers, listen. In this man Jesus, there is forgiveness for sins, for your sins. Everyone who believes in him is freed from all guilt and declared right with God, something the Jewish law could never do. Be careful, don't let the prophet's words apply to you. For they said, look you mockers, be amazed and die. For I am doing something in your own day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. And that is from Habakkuk chapter 1. Turning now to Psalms, Psalm 138 today. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I will give thanks to your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness, because your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. When I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me the strength I need. Every king in all the earth will give you thanks, O Lord, for all of them will hear your words. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's ways, for the glory of the Lord is very great. Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will preserve me against the anger of my enemies. You will clench your fist against my angry enemies. Your power will save me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life. For your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. Proverbs 17, 17 and 18. A friend is always loyal, and a brother is born in a time of need. It is poor judgment to co-sign a friend's note to become responsible for a neighbor's debts. And to end today, I have a blessing upon this lovely day for you. And it is taken from the prayer of Jabez, which is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. May the Lord enlarge your territory 
expand your influence, and increase your capacity to walk in faith. May his hand of power be upon you in a way that marks everything that you do. May he keep you from harm, both causing and enduring it, and may he use you to bless a world very much in need. May he surprise you with breakthroughs and still water Sabbath moments. Your shepherd has placed his hand of blessing upon your head, and he will faithfully lead you. Have a lighthearted, joy-filled day today. Love you all.